Hello, I'm Dr. Pasantan Marashli, lecturer of internal medicine and hepatogastroenterology at the Faculty of Medicine, Ain Shams University. Today, we're going to be discussing the clinical examination with respect to the abdomen. Um, I hope it's going to be fruitful for you. Before starting any sort of clinical examination, there are certain rules that we need to be aware of. Um, first off, we need to greet the patient. We need to introduce ourselves to the patient and to tell them exactly what we're going to be doing, whether it was performing a procedure or performing any sort of clinical examination in order to gain uh, oral consent that the patient is willing to do so. Next, we need to ensure proper exposure of the patient um, according to the site that we wish to examine. Uh, for example, with regards to abdominal examination, we need to make sure that the patient is exposed from the nipples all the way to the symphysis pubis. Um, next, we need to ask the patient if they're in pain so that we can avoid the area that they're complaining from or at least keep it till the end of examination if need be. We're going to demonstrate those steps right now. ازاي حضرتك؟ الحمد أنا دكتورة بسنت، أنا مدرس جهاز هضمي وكبد في طب عين شمس. أستأذنك ممكن أفحصك؟ اتفضل طيب، آه في أي مكان بيوجعك؟ نعم في أي مكان بيوجعك تحب تقول لي آه عليه؟ قدام الهلم. طيب خلاص أنا مش هحاول إن أنا قدر آه. الإمكان ما أكشفش على الحتة دي، لا. بس لو أنا سببت لك أي ألم عايزك تعرفني، تمام؟ أوكي شكرا. We're going to start uh, our examination by first inspecting the abdomen. Abdominal inspection always needs to be done from two different positions in addition to certain maneuvers that we need to do in order to look for certain signs. Our first position is going to be from the foot of the bed. Looking from this view allows me to see the abdominal contour and uh, to look for uh, abdominal breathing. I need to make sure that the abdomen moves freely with respiration and to comment if there's any abnormality with the contour of the abdomen. For example, if there's a certain fullness to the abdomen or rather if there is a scaphoid abdomen. Next, we need to examine the patient tangentially. Looking from the side of the patient allows me to detect any abnormalities in the skin or in the umbilicus or uh, if there was any problem with hair distribution. Skin abnormalities that we need to look for include scars. For example, this patient has a scar that is visible at McBurney's point, indicating that he probably had an appendectomy uh, in, uh, in his past. We can also look for other skin abnormalities such as um, visible peristalsis, we can look for any pigmentation, any abnormal nodules, we can look for any stria that may be visible, and we can also look for any abnormal hair distribution. For example, it is quite common with chronic liver disease that uh, hair distribution would be affected whereby pubic hair becomes sparse and becomes more feminine in distribution. Um, we can also look at the umbilicus to detect if there is any problem with its site, for example, if it's shifted downwards as a result of abdominal distension, or if there is any abnormality with uh, nodules that can be visible in the umbilicus, or if there's any discharge that I can see um, exuding from the umbilicus. Um, and we need to give a comment about all of that. The special maneuvers that need to be done in order to detect certain abnormalities include uh, me lying down a little beside the patient in order to detect if there are any visible pulsations after asking the patient to stop uh, uh, breathing for a moment. Visible pulsations can be seen along the epigastrium in this patient. Another special maneuver that we need to do with respect to inspection includes asking the patient to rise from the bed unsupported in order to detect any divarication of his recti. Okay. Divarication can be seen right here. Shukran. Divarication is a wide separation or widening in the space between the uh, two rectus abdominis muscles which indicates weakening that can happen with abdominal distension and it can even happen in pregnant females for that matter. Uh, we can seize this moment as we're done with uh, examining divarication for recti to take a look at the patient's back, which is an important part of our abdominal examination. Certain scars can be seen rather in the back as compared to the front. For example, a patient that has undergone an nephrectomy, uh, his scar would be visible more in the back rather than the front. So we need to take, to take a look at the back to make sure that there are no missing scars that I haven't uh, inspected uh, on the front. And I need to make sure as well that there were no visible nodules, no abnormal pigmentations. The same items that were done for uh, the front of the abdomen need to be applied to the back as well. 
Um, next, we need to detect if there are any hernial orifices. Um, we need to look for any visible hernial orifices, and this can be done with the patient in a standing position. And uh, we would need to ask the patient to strain, for example, by asking them to cough in order to detect if there would be any bulging of any uh, mass which would indicate a hernia. Um, <coughs> We need to look from all sides in order to make sure that there are no visible hernial orifices. Okay. We're now going to palpate the liver. Palpation of the liver, as with other abdominal organs, need to be done by deep palpation. As a general rule, when examining the abdomen, we need to make sure that the abdominal muscles are relaxed. So we need to instruct the patient to bend their knees and to make sure that they are flat on the bed in order to uh, ensure proper examination. Okay. Okay, palpation of the liver can be divided into three parts. The first of which is palpating the lower border of the right lobe of the liver. The second of which is to palpate the lower border of the left lobe of the liver. And the third is to perform bimanual examination to detect any hepatic pulsations. Palpating the right lobe of the liver should begin at the right iliac fossa. Our hand needs to be parallel to the right coastal margin, as well as the lower border of the liver. So it needs to be a little bit tangential in position rather than completely horizontal. Our tips, the tips of our fingers need to be away from the rectus abdominis muscle. So we generally put our hand with the uh, mid-clavicular line. We're going to be starting our palpation at the right iliac fossa, as previously mentioned. We're going to be performing two movements in order to ensure proper palpation. The first of which is to push inwards, the second of which is to push a little bit upwards. I try to push inwards when the patient is inspirating or taking a breath in. And I push a little upwards when the patient is in maximum inspiration because this is the point at which abdominal organs will be pushed downwards by the, um, uh, by the inflated lung. So I'm going to synchronize my hand movements with the patient's breathing. Okay. So I can feel the lower border of the patient's right lobe right about here. The first thing I need to do is to determine how many, uh, the distance from the right coastal margin that the right lobe is. And this can be expressed in two different ways. <coughs> the first of which is in centimeters, and this can be performed by having a measuring tape and measuring the distance from the lower border of the uh, right coastal margin. The second of which is to express this in hand breath, and this can be done by the patient's own hand. For example, I would instruct the patient to put his hand and express it as so. <laughs> So if I were to describe this, I would say that it is about three finger breadth from the lower border of the uh, right coastal margin. Now, normally speaking, you may not feel the right uh, uh, lobe of the liver. It is okay to not feel the lower border of the right lobe of the liver. If I did feel it, however, I need to comment on the uh, border if it was sharp or if it was round. I need to comment on the surface of the liver if it were smooth or nodular. I need to comment on the consistency if it, it was soft, firm or hard in consistency. And I also need to comment on any tenderness that the patient may have elicited on examination. Next, I need to look for the upper border of the liver, and this is done to uh, measure the span of the liver in order to determine if there was an increase in the size of the liver, which is called hepatomegaly, or rather a shrunken liver. And this can be done by heavy percussion, starting from the second intercostal space. Okay. 
I would do heavy percussion starting from the second intercostal space up until I can detect a dull note of percussion. And this determines where the upper border of the uh, right lobe of the liver is. I can confirm that by asking the patient to take a deep breath in and the dullness would then uh, become resonant again as the lung inflates. Now that I have determined the um, site of the upper border of the right lobe of the liver and the site of the lower border of the right lobe of the liver, I can measure the span of the liver, which is normally 12 to 15 centimeters. Um, and it differs according to the uh, uh, age of the patient. It can also differ according to the uh, BMI of the patient. If it were an obese patient or a thin patient, it differs as so. Um, but I need to express this pan in order to gain uh, an idea of the size of the liver. Um, next, we need to do a palpation for the lower, lo lower border of the left lobe of the liver. Um, we would start that right on top of the umbilicus, going all the way with the same exact movements that we've performed for the right lobe until we can reach the uh, left lobe of the liver. Nafas Amir. Biroh. So I can feel the left lobe right about here. And I need to express this in forms of uh, a distance from the Zephy sternum, which again can be done by the, using the patient's own hand and expressing it in terms of hand breadth or finger breadth, or by using a measuring tape to measure the distance exactly in centimeters from the uh, Zephy sternum to where I have felt the uh, lower border of the left lobe of the liver. Again, if I did feel it, then I need to comment as well on the surface of the liver on the consistency, on uh, the character of the edge that I felt, whether it was sharp or smooth in character. And I also need to uh, mention if there was any tenderness during examination. Last but not least, we would do bimanual examination in order to look for any hepatic pulsations. This can be done by placing your right hand on top of, uh, right below the right coastal margin. And your left hand would be placed at the back of the patient, part of it covering the left coastal margin and the rest of it right under the left coastal margin. I would then press a little and ask the patient to hold his breath for a moment. I cannot detect any hepatic pulsations in this patient. Um, and this concludes the examination of the liver. So to summarize, our final comment regarding palpation of the liver would include the site of the uh, lower border of the right lobe and uh, the span of the liver that I have detected. I would talk about the border, the edge, the consistency, the surface of the liver, and I would mention if there was any tenderness and if there were any systolic expansi pulsations that were felt when uh, performing bimanual examination. I would also mention the very same items with regards to the left lobe of the liver, whereby I would state its site from the Zephy sternum. I would mention the border, the edge, the surface, the consistency. I would also talk about uh, if there was any tenderness when examining. Thank you.